the latest looks and styles at Katie's with popular brands like Kenneth Cole, Hugo Boss, and Michael Kors at affordable prices. Let Katie's outfit you for your next outing. Katie's, located on Spooner's Hill. Hi, I'm Dale Clark, president of the Professional Road Tennis Association. I want you all to hit up the boiler room. It's a H2P media production. The, the scope for this is so large, yeah. so large. You ain't even scratched the surface yet of what's possible, right? That's, but scratching though, <laughs> huh? But still trying to scratch. No, but you see, I mean, yeah. you've done you've done a lot, mm -hmm. yeah, a yeah, lot, a but lot. it can get so much bigger. Yeah, yeah, because as I told you, we wanted to rival the ATP. Mm -hmm. That's the that's what we're working towards. You know, you got you got developing raw tennis coaches. Yeah, we, we got the value road tennis coaches. Because it's just not road tennis now. It's actually going to be a road tennis industry where mm -hmm. there are so many different stakeholders. So this hat, there's anything to do with your road tennis? Yeah, these are, this is one of the hats. Okay. One of our official so hats. So merchandising going to be part of it? Merchandising, mm -hmm. you got merchandising. You got persons that right now have people that make the rackets. Where are the rackets being manufactured? There's this guy in KFL that does them. Mm -hmm. so and there, you, there's a standard racket that you have to use yeah, in the tournament? Yeah, standard racket dimensions and stuff like that, you know. And then we market it outside of Barbados, where we do promotional tours, exhibitions and stuff. We have a tournament going to St. Vincent, started last year, so we'll be doing that again this year. You have a tournament in St. Vincent? Yeah, through Capital Financial, they sponsor okay. our OCS So there are programs. the extensions who are, who yeah, are playing road tennis. Playing road tennis. Yeah, and that, that, that tour last year was touching because when we went, mm -hmm. we started off in the countryside and there were some guys that turned up barefoot and they were actually borrowing the shoes to play. And we were saying, but every boy foot can't be the same size. But that was the interest. Mm. Right. And that was touching. You seeing people just coming out, wanting to be involved in the sport. As it got closer to the town, then you could see the, you know, the demographic difference where you start seeing persons that would play a long time coming in shoes and stuff. Right. And it was just a big thing. So it everybody was... But, but that, that's a big deal. Tennis. That's what was getting yeah. early in terms uh -huh. of people yeah. playing. You know, I think that is tennis is tech. I know you just hear about it. On that level, but everybody said I reached that point and still got more. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to that day where yeah. you have people traveling around the region yeah. right. playing road tennis tournaments. Mm -hmm. That's that's where we want to develop first the regional circuit. So we started in St. Vincent. It was going good there. Then we were going to do Trinidad, St. Lucia, Jamaica, mm -hmm. oh, the rest yeah. of the OECS. Mm -hmm. And you know because it's a in these times, as I say, you have to find other ways to earn revenue. If you could earn it through sports. Because the two benefits, you got a healthy lifestyle, benefiting from the health aspect of it. Yeah. You also got some money to put in your pocket. So you, like you said, you, it's not just about the game. You create mm. an industry. So yeah, it's the it's manufacturing, an manufacturing, the coaching, the coaching the officials because you could got officials flying from here. Right. To, to say, for example, Australia, where they go mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. coach. You could got coaches now to leave Barbados, go to Australia, set up Rotans Academies through Asia. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's it just like body implant correct like, yeah, just like well our part of our vision is like how cuba export coaches got everybody going to wear every country cuba where coaches all cuba over, coach. yeah so that's something that we could be doing for road times mm -hmm. generate right. foreign exchange because you could pay about the money in barbados you could be getting your salary in barbados you know branding right. foreign exchange mm -hmm. that's what i was getting at in mm -hmm. earlier in terms of maintaining barbados as the center of the sport and making sure that we stay mm -hmm. ahead of the curve yeah. You know what I mean? In terms of all aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. Because it's possible, you know, the whole, they have a Japanese um, person or company that has a patent on a method of making the steel pan. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, different, different things that would have started in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. but now are run or capitalized on from mm -hmm. outside of the region. Yeah, but I find that for sports, especially in Barbados, you got to get a culture change because people just see sports as a hobby. Right. Don't take it serious. Yes, right. Yeah, that's right. what we say. Oh, but like I said, that's why I asked you that question. What gave you that crazy idea? Because that's a, it. It seems so obvious. You wonder why nobody never did it before. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? I like, you say. probably try, but yeah. they say, see they probably had that person. Man, I, I know it's like you said. The culture of Barbados is the way we see sport is not like that. So yeah. you would. This would have to be a real different thinking kind of individual to come and see that possibility. You said you say. 
No, locally. Locally? Yeah. And then actually carry it out. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. Take some vision. Because what we do, like, we when we do our tours, we make sure that we, in our tours, for the players as well as the officials, we go to a professional sport event mm. so we could get ideas to bring them back to road tennis. So when you come to road tennis, it's not that you're just coming to road tennis, it's the experience mm. that when you go in your office the next day or you go, you know, you go town that road tennis is on your lips. You just yeah. go tell somebody about your experience. My road tennis is good, the fun, man. We, I bring things. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's another aspect of it too because, yeah. you know, if you go to baseball in the state mm-hmm. or something, it's about hot dogs and fun the atmosphere Correct. and yeah. the kids going yeah. and that kind of thing. The whole culture around yeah. it. So that what we try to bring to road tennis is that when you come to road tennis and you leave the night that you just tell yourself, you road tennis are good, but the ambience, the fun, the, you know, the fun interaction. Are they yet? No, nah, we ain't getting sure, that yet. Sure, I getting in the <laughs> But that's, that's the, the, the thing where you look at road tennis, I, I, from a youth man, we come in on, men, men should say you're playing on a half a back door. Yeah. Now I know that you've got the size and the measurements. So where's the actual requirements of a racket? Because you know a lot of men are going to be vets now. We can't mm-hmm. play on a half a back door. Because you know men like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you see, that's, that's a challenge. Ball. When you when you're taking it, ball. because there are two things that you fight. You have people that want to just think local. Right. But for the sport to grow, it can't remain, here, it can't remain local. Right, right. You got to think beyond the shores. Right. So when you tell sport where you got, got standards, because someone going to ask you, what's the size of the racket? What's the weight? What's the weight of the ball? Dimensions and stuff. So we went ahead. I met a guy from China. He owns a factory in China that produces balls. So we got a ball specif- uh, specifically made for road tennis. Mm-hmm. So that's a ball that we have now that we use in our tournaments and like at the academy and stuff. Tell me about the design of that ball and coming up with the specification for that ball. Um, we took a... Uh, Regular road tennis ball, which is basically yeah, for uh, uh, more uh, friendly uh, tennis ball. We just call it rainbow. Correct. Mm-hmm. And so okay. when he got, he came to Barbados, so he showed in the balls and time they got this is what we use. But basically, it's illegal because we defaced any property okay. and that sport. So right. going down that line, you're looking for a lawsuit. Yeah, if people can like it, just waiting. Yeah, just waiting. Yeah, so given the ball to him that we like something like this here, the dimensions and stuff. So the first ball that we got was a little hard. Then this one was a little closer to the. The regular, ball. yeah, the regular tennis ball. But challenge, as I tell people, you gotta make a start somewhere. So you're not gonna get a ball right to the tennis ball because no. that's a used ball. Uh, we'll be using now is new balls. Yeah. So the mentality has to change. You have to understand that. Well, this is progress. But some people, oh man, we still like the like the old ball, ball, the old ball and stuff like that. Yeah. But so what's the difference? What was the difference in terms of the the functioning? Of this ball versus the old type of ball? Some people say it's a little slower, but you gotta understand that when you're creating a product for television. Long Tennis did it a couple of years ago. Remember the rallies used to finish really short? You see, yeah. serve, boom, serve, boom. So, what we did is the specifications for the ball, get different pressure in the ball so that it would be a little, no, just so you get more rallies. Because rallies is what sell. People want to see. Right, yeah. I say, you want to get it back on. That's what people want to see. Sports is entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to see a man just serving and boom, man, hitting the shot. Right, a man getting a show. Or Correct. Pay. You want to see, you know, the, the technique. You want to see the agility. You want to see people retrieving balls and stuff like that. Yeah. Because those things, you know, right. get the fans more into it. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you don't make no money from the people that come to the arena. And you know our population, that's another thing, Barbies, the population don't support right. sports because the end of when you watch a football match, say for example in Brazil, you get 80,000 people coming to the stadium. Road tennis, we could get a crowd probably of 5,000 maximum. Right. So and that's a lot. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of right. people, big man. What, so, and that's at one event? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, right. Right. that's a lot. That's right. Yeah. That's a so lot. So now when you look at it, we, we interest got to be developing a television Sport. Mm-hmm. Correct. So you gotta prepare the sport not just for the local market but for international market. Where someone, say for example, Thailand could be sitting and with a zero of tennis, you know, it capture them and they start watching and stuff like that there and then start telling their friends and stuff and then we build a television following around the world. Right. Because at that point then that's when T V rights can come into play. What part you could even offer bigger tournaments. Mm-hmm. Because I keep promising the guys one of the things I want to do and I pray to God and beg God is that we can put on a million dollar tournament that before shot my a player playing road tennis could win a million dollars. And that's not achievable though, man. Because you have five thousand already and ain't really like 
all the way up already big mm-hmm. man. Yeah. 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 add more and more mm-hmm. improvements more and more yeah, people yeah. gonna come out more and more tournaments mean more and more money Correct. you know what I mean more and more sponsors gonna come mm-hmm. along so it has achievable the score yeah. for this is exciting man yeah. Whoa, that's crazy baby. so your your team Mm-hmm. Tell me about the team that the team behind Royal Tennis because I know you're the face of it, but you must yeah. have people yeah, around you. Yeah, we dance with a good team. Mm-hmm. We have a business event manager, Michelle Strong. She's our business event manager. I have Sandra Busher. She deals with the players relations. I have um, Vinzo Burkett. He was the head coach at the academy. He deals with our logistics. I have Roger Christie. He deals with all the fixtures and ranking in the players because we have the players rank and stuff. Okay. And then we have made strategic partnerships with people outside of Barbados where, you know, we go send the information. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a partner in Panama. We have one, we have uh, about three in the UK. Working now on Australia. Mesa and Rose into Brazil. Then there's this guy in the UK, Steve Green. They play fresco ball, so we try to do a partnership. They play what? A game called fresco ball. Like we would play on the beach, the paddle okay. ball tennis. Ah, yeah. So we try to, you know, partner with them there so that those players could get the interest in road tennis, see what road tennis has to offer. Because I was telling my players here in Barbados that we take it for granted. Yes, there's a price for two cars. But we're saying that someone in Australia sitting down can say, you got two cars in Barbados. Why could we want them there? Why always want to go to Barbados? Train and come down here. Right. And carry everything. And carry everything. Yeah, so you can't put it over up on a boat. I can't. I so that's why, that's why I try to explain them that they got to grasp your opportunity. Know keep that we're ahead. Right. Keep, keep ahead. ahead. Keep so ahead you got to train. You got to change your whole mentality. Sport is not no longer road tennis where you bear back and you bet in a man or oh, this four beers from this game and things. So they got s- and a half of back doors now. Yeah, they got serious. Oh, yeah. yeah, those youngsters to take it serious. Yeah. yeah. Because one of the issues that we have in sport here in Barbados is a lack of consistent, high quality competition. Correct. So you know if a man, we say, is a, is a, a great cricketer, you know one thing, the um, England stopped West Indies players from playing or limited West Indies players from playing county cricket and a lot of people said that that affected the quality of West Indian cricket, okay. you know, because they didn't have access to that consistent mm-hmm. high-level competition. Yeah, but that's what we try to do in Royal Tennis. We try to, we sit down with the sponsors and we tell the sponsors our vision. This is where we want to go. And we don't like to call it sponsorship. We have partners mm-hmm. because it's pretty long haul. When we go, we saw a three, five-year program. This is what we want to do. This is what we want to achieve. Put the control measures in place. You know, you get your mileage and we show how we can improve the tournament from every angle, every aspect, mm-hmm. not just for the players, but also for the sponsors' interests. So it's all about partnerships and longevity, not just, oh, I just want to keep a tournament. And that's why thing happens, that everybody just concentrate on just a one-off tournament. But you got, you know, got a plan. Long-term planning. Long-term yeah, planning. Yeah, and, and planning is, is, is progression. Correct. Because when you plan, if you want to plan, if, if, when they say, if you ain't plan, Prepare the plan to, to fail or prepare to prepare, like prepare to fail. Right. That, and, and when you look at it, how far the sport has come, how long you feel like a, a, a timeline. Let me say five years. In five will years? You see, will you see World Tennis in Barbados, the Professional World Tennis Association? In five years? Yeah. In five years, we want to go one major tournament yeah. where then we could get as Green was saying earlier, we could get players from the region coming. Right. Because what we're doing, we're going planting the seeds now. In the region. Starting the individual competitions. For example, the competition in St. Vincent, only Vincentians could play up to three years. Okay. So by then, they should be able to produce players that when they come to Barbados will be competitive. Right. right. Not just coming for a free trip. We want right. competition. Right. Because, like, I don't know about, I don't really find it here, but when we go to the islands, people bat their athletes. Yeah. So it's also a CSME movement where you could get, say, you could get a thousand Vincentians coming to support mm-hmm. their players. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. a thousand coming from Trinidad. So it also got significant part for our tourism product. Right. When you could got tournaments like these here, right. and there's nothing saying now with the program that we're doing in the UK, the partnerships we have in the UK, where we could got people flying down, coming to Barbados, the Australian program, the Asian program. So. It, could be significant. Right. It could be a significant injection of foreign exchange in Barbados. You, 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 seem, you, get this you seem real, real yeah. cool about this, though. Are you trying to contain your ex- excitement, or are you just that kind of fella? That's cool, man. Okay, because just like this, yeah, big. man, just chilling. I got me here saying whoa every minute, and you know, oh, oh, I didn't realize how big Royal Tennis is. Yeah, big man. When you say you got the, what sport they got in Barbados? Is got four, five thousand people at one time, but cricket. 
cricket is getting up. In, in yeah. Oval? Yeah, probably in the in the Oval when you got Oval, international cricket, cricket going that, on. That's probably CPL. only thing. CPL. CPL, mm-hmm. you, you just get that here, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But they ain't got another sport like a call and by mm-hmm. that horse racing, but get that work. But that don't get that consistently every mm-hmm. week. So, World Tank is big. It big already, big man. You you, you do great, you did great things, but you big man with World Tank is big. Yeah, boy, you yeah, yeah, you're you're your squad do real good. I know your background is in basketball. I know you're a basketball yeah. player. Mm-hmm. What has your experience in the basketball realm taught you to do or to not to do? Okay. First thing is to treat the players first. The players are important, so you've got to make sure the players are taken care of. Because you know sometimes you want to train hard in basketball, you train hard and just bragging rights, you don't get anything. Mm-hmm. So that used to be because conversations amongst ourselves, man, you don't get nothing this year. So that was still in your mindset tell you that when you, that you get a job, you can kind of get your job and you don't care nothing about basketball anymore. Because you don't get nothing from it. You're going to all that hard work. And it's like expensive that. because yeah. you got to get the gear, you got to eat properly. This year, giving up your time. But you ain't getting nothing. All you're getting is to play sport. But so now in road tennis, when you do these things, there's something at the end of the tunnel for you. So if I understand, for you, come, mm-hmm. you, you have the perspective of a player. Correct. Having been a high level player of another sport, yeah. you know how players feel. Correct. I understand that. So that was one of the key things to make sure that players are taken care of.